Hey everybody, it's Kendra. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you've been here before. So if you have been watching me for a while, you know that I generally film in the kitchen and usually that corner back there is full. It is empty today. That is usually where I keep my June brewing vessel, but today ugh, I wanted to show, show you guys what this looks like. Um, my video today is going to be all about SCOBY maintenance and how to take a pause from brewing and what to do, etc. So if you look closely on this vessel, it says December 27th fed. So I have not really touched this thing for about three months. Um, you can see that the SCOBY is gigantic. This is one SCOBY. This has grown so much in three months. There's not a lot of liquid left. So I definitely have some maintenance to do today. Oh my God, that thing is so heavy. Ooh. So yeah, I have not been brewing for the past three, three and a half months. The reason being, um, usually my husband also drinks June with me. Usually like every afternoon we would have, you know, 16 to 32 ounces each of June and we would love it and it would taste so good and it would be this like, it was this afternoon ritual. But my husband started noticing that he just felt really bloated after he drank it. Um, I think he has some like yeast imbalance um, because he would get that way with June or kombucha. He also will get that way with beer. Um, so I think it's some yeast thing. So because he did not want to drink June, I decided I was gonna take a break as well, um, just because if I brew, I brew too much. And like for me to have a really good rhythm and to keep continuously producing really, really good June, I can't be taking breaks. Like I can have two gallons of June brewed every five or six days. But if I take a couple days in between, like, you know, if I finish a batch and I flavor it, whatever, and then I start a new batch like two or three days later, just that in between time, it's enough to just throw it off. So for me, if I'm gonna be brewing really good June, I need to just keep, keep it going, keep brewing. But if I do that, then I end up with too much June and it's just like, I can't get the cycling right on it. So anyway, I decided I was gonna take a break as well. So the last time I fed it was December 27th. I think I put maybe two quarts or one gallon of sweet tea in here and I haven't touched it since. So you can see that there's not a whole lot of liquid left, but the SCOBY has really grown. So today I'm gonna to share with you how to maintain this. It's super easy. Basically, I'm just gonna remove some of the SCOBY and I'm gonna feed it. I'm gonna give it some fresh sweet tea. The reason I'm gonna remove some of the SCOBY is because, you know, this SCOBY was like, like a half a centimeter thick and now it's like three to four inches thick. So if I feed it, I've just got that giant blob of SCOBY that's just gonna keep eating and eating and eating. So it's gonna feed it's gonna like take all the food much faster. So if I call some of the SCOBY, it's going to feed much more slowly and it's going to stay uh, good for much longer. So this vessel that I have now, this is my main brewing vessel. I do not have a separate SCOBY hotel going at the moment, um, but this is essentially acting as a SCOBY hotel. With a SCOBY hotel, basically you're putting sweet tea, some starter liquid and SCOBYs into a separate container and you just need to make sure you feed it once a month, every couple months. This is just like a giant SCOBY hotel that I have not really touched. Um, but the reason I wanna do this is to make sure that my SCOBY is healthy and happy and that when I do decide to start brewing again, I'm good to go. Um, I did a video a couple years ago about getting SCOBY mold. That was the other time that I have done a break in brewing, but I did not take care of it. Um, I think about two years ago, a naturopath actually told me that I had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which I don't actually think I had. Um, but she said I had to stop drinking kombucha in June. I couldn't eat anything fermented, um, no probiotics, nothing. So that was the other time that I've taken about a three month break from brewing. But that time I didn't feed it. I just stopped what I was doing. I, yeah, didn't feed it. That was that. And three months later, my SCOBY was completely black and dead and moldy and it was super gross. So when that happened, you know, I filmed a video about it, but then I also posted about it on Instagram and I tagged Hannah Crum, who is one of the founders of Kombucha Camp. And I asked her like, yo, what happened? What is going on? Is this mold? She said, yes, it is mold. And basically it happened because 
they're like the liquid evaporated after three months, like so much of the liquid, the starter liquid, it just evaporated and the environment in the brewing vessel was not acidic enough to keep the mold at bay. So that is why I got mold. So, you know, it's totally fine to take a break from brewing, um, you know, just for personal reasons, health reasons, whatever. Maybe you're going on vacation for a couple weeks. Seriously, do not fret. If you need to take a break from brewing, it's not a big deal. Um, I know that in the big book of kombucha, they do talk about maybe like refrigerating your SCOBY. I have never done that. I have never put my, my, I've never put my refrigerator in my SCOBY. I've never put my SCOBY in the refrigerator. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, maybe if you're going to be gone for like six months. Okay. Um, but yeah, I take brewing breaks for about three months and it's totally fine. You just got to make sure to feed it. So anyway, let me show you quickly what I do to feed this. I'm also going to remove some SCOBY and then we're going to have a little chat about what to do with that extra SCOBY. All right. So I'm going to make one gallon of sweet tea. So I've already got three quarts of cool water over here in a gallon jug. And now I'm just going to make one quart of very strong sweet tea. So I've got my cool little basket here. I'm going to take three tablespoons of green tea. Put that in the basket. So if you are doing this with kombucha, um, you could just use whatever tea you regularly use, whether that be black tea, oolong, a blend, maybe use some green tea in there, whatever. Um, now we're going to put the lid on. All right. And now I'm going to put in one quart of hot water here, and then I'm going to let this sit for 20 minutes. So I prefer to brew a smaller amount of very concentrated tea and then add it to cool water later. Um, just because then it'll cool it down. The whole process is much, much simpler, much faster. Um, if I do it like this, if I make like a full gallon of sweet tea, it's going to take a million years to cool down. All right. So it's been 20 minutes. So I'm going to carefully remove this pretty, pretty hot. And then I do like to use a metal strainer. Um, when I transfer the hot tea over to the cool water, just to make sure I get out any chunks of tea leaves that maybe escaped, um, the tea basket. All right. So I did have a little bit extra, so I am just going to scoop some of it out, um, because I want to make room for my honey. So I have one cup of honey here that I'm going to add into this tea mixture. So because I put that hot tea into three quarts of cool tea, this is nice and cooled already. I don't have to wait for anything to cool down. Okay. Now I'm going to stir that up, get all that honey mixed in there. All right. So I've got my sweet tea already here before I add these two guys into this, I need to remove some of the SCOBY. So I just washed my hands. I'm going to reach in here. All right. So, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. This is crazy. All right. So I'm going to take off a bunch of this, but if you look at the top of this, it's kind of funky looking. Look at how textured that is. And that's totally fine. That's how it should look. There is no mold on this. This looks very, very good. Very, very healthy. Okay. So I'm going to Set that to the side. Oh my gosh, I need a bigger container. So sometimes you definitely need two hands and you got to use a little strength to pull it apart. So yeah, I'm going to leave in this chunk. Uh, I would say I probably removed about 50 or 60% of the SCOBY. I could take off more, but since this is just one giant blob, it is quite hard to rip apart. Um, and I don't really feel like ripping it apart horizontally. I like having the big giant pancake. So Yep. Just going to leave that in there. All right. And now I just need to add in my sweet tea. So I've got my little bit of extra that doesn't have any honey in it, which is fine. And then the whole gallon is going in. And now I'm going to use a clean towel to cover it up. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I like to use these kind of like exercise headbands because they, sometimes they have a little bit of rubbery stuff on one side, so they really stay in place nicely. Um, but I always like to put on two, just to make sure that no bugs get in there. And then finally, I gotta label this guy to make sure I know uh, when to feed it next. So I'm just marking it April 1st as being fed. All right, so there you go. We are all fed and tucked away safely in our, in our little June corner. 
so yeah, April 1st fed this. Um, this will be good for probably at least three months um, if I choose to continue taking a pause on brewing. But I think I will probably come back relatively soon um, to get this brewing again for real, like for actually drinking it. All right, so there you go. That is all you need to know for how to take care of a SCOBY if you are taking a break from brewing, whether it be for one or two weeks for a vacation or for a longer period of time, like three months, like I have been doing. Now, also, I do just want to show you this SCOBY. So this is a pretty, pretty heavy chunk of SCOBY. Um, now, you might be asking yourself, what can I do with that? What are you going to do with that, Kendra? So what you can do with SCOBY, got a few options. Um, you can compost it. Yes, I know. My kitty is over here going crazy. Um, I think she wants some SCOBY. Not really. Um, you can compost it if you have an actual compost pile or if you have a worm composter. Um, I used to have worms and sometimes I would give the worms some SCOBY. Um, when I had a garden plot, sometimes I would just bury this in the garden. It's good for the soil, just add some bacteria in there. Um, I have given SCOBY to my friends who have chickens. Um, they say that the eggs or like the, the shells um, of the eggs are nice and hard. I don't know, but the chickens seem to gobble it up. But what I'm gonna be doing today is inspired by a gift one of my friends gave me. Um, my friend sent me some kombucha SCOBY candy. So this is from the brand Eva's Cultured. So Eva's Cultured uh, Kombucha Candy Confections. Is that what this is called? Eva's Cultured Kombucha Confections Candy. So we have an orange cream one. We have an apple pie one, and we have a lavender and a lemon one. These, when she first sent me these, I thought these were like kombucha that had been combined with gelatin. These are actually SCOBY. This is made from the SCOBY. So this is what they look like. They're just little bits of dehydrated SCOBY with a lot of sugar. I will say there definitely is a fair amount of sugar on here. And they're good. They're not disgusting at all. Like got a nice kind of gummy texture to them. Like I think of this as a much healthier gummy bear. On the packaging, it does say, because they are never heated above 110 degrees, they contain some of the live organisms that make kombucha so special. So the ingredients in these, it looks like it's just the SCOBY and then different spices and sugar. So I'm kind of thinking what I'm gonna do is take some SCOBY, just kind of dice it up and just sprinkle some sugar, sprinkle some different spices on it. I don't know. Um, if it works out, I will be sure to do a video on it in the future. And if it does not work out, then, then I will not. So I hope you guys are doing great. Have a fabulous weekend. If you are brewing or fermenting or doing any cool projects like this, I would love to hear what you're up to. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.